Now at 11, a man lights homes on fire and then starts shooting at the fire engines that show up. The ambush this morning in Springfield that could have taken a tragic turn. Just a lot of sheriff stuff with guns and running up and down the streets and lots of cops. A deadly shootout this morning was a frightening wake up call for some in Longview. What led up to this confrontation? Plus, slow down. Where red light cameras are now issuing speeding tickets in the metro area. Your news starts right now. This is KGW News at 11. First tonight, we are following breaking news out of Longview where one person is dead after a crash on SR 432. It's known as Industrial Way. The cross is at Douglas Street. Take a look at some of the photos from the scene. We have also learned that a pregnant woman and a toddler were also trapped in that car. First responders got them out and were taken to the hospital with serious injuries. The driver and passenger in the second car are both OK. The road is still closed and we're told it's going to be closed for a while. We'll update you as we learn more. New tonight, thousands of people wanted for domestic violence violations all over the country got a knock on their door. And tonight, many of those suspects are in jail. It's part of an annual domestic violence sweep that started in Clackamas County. KGW's Catherine Cook is live at the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office, where she joined deputies on their search tonight. Catherine. And Nina, this is the 16th annual domestic violence sweep here in Clackamas County. And this year, 300 other agencies from around the country joined them. And if just one woman is made safe tonight because of that, deputies say that is the most important number of all. We're going to hit the winds. The game plan, deputies from multiple agencies knocking on hundreds of doors where domestic violence offenders might be hiding in Clackamas County. We're not going to sit back and allow these offenders to get away with it and be free in society. For Deputy Robert Strand, this annual sweep is personal. He works with domestic violence victims every day. He says many aren't ready to report the people who are hurting them except to a counselor. We want to be willing to hear their story and help them understand how dangerous their situation is without the immediate requirement to report and fall through with law enforcement can really be a good first step. At this house, no luck. The suspect isn't home. Even with warrants, deputies say catching violators isn't always easy. They change addresses and they run. They also try to get back with the people they hurt. We saw that play out here in Gladstone, where deputies make an arrest. Walter, we come talk to you, please? The suspects wanted on a domestic violence warrant and for violating a no contact order with the victim who was living here with him. You got a warrant, you know. It's a very difficult situation for the victim to be in, where it appears that she's been assaulted by the suspect in the past, and now she's being more or less re-victimized by the fact that this is her only home, her only residence, and she may have to leave. Back at headquarters, deputies booked the suspect and then another. That's 12 so far for the night. Knowing that she's not in the presence of someone that has assaulted her in the past and could have very easily assaulted her today. And we just got an update from Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. They arrested 17 people tonight. Nina, most of those violators were men, but there was also some women involved. Back to you. All right, hard work. Catherine, thank you. Police say a Springfield man likely set fires this morning to lure in first responders so he could ambush them. Around 4 o'clock this morning, firefighters responded to this. Four homes on fire in the same neighborhood. And when they got there, a man started shooting at their fire trucks. Then he killed himself. A neighbor describes what firefighters did when they heard the shots. They took off and hid for 10 minutes or so before the SWAT guys showed up, all the police guys in their vans, and um, they kept everyone off to the side, and we just kind of waited and watched our house burn down. That is crazy. Firefighters are not armed. The fires destroyed three homes and damaged a fourth. Police say everyone inside did get out okay. But take a look at this. We're getting a closer look at some of that damage. Firefighters sharing these photos of the bullet holes in their engines. Look at all of the ones in the windshield and on the orange of that fire truck. Thankfully, no firefighters were hurt in the gunfire. We had to go out and then they had to pat us all down. It's super scary, super, super scary. 
An anonymous threat forced the Kelso School District today to cancel classes at Huntington Middle School. Someone called that school and said there was a weapon in one of the lockers. That call came in just after school started around 8 this morning. The response was quick and it was serious. Students told us police descended on the school like there was a shooter inside. Students said they were evacuated, frisked, and then put on buses and taken to the Longview Expo Center. A handmade sign at the school told parents where to find their children. Some kids thought it was no big deal. Others were understandably shaken up. They thought it was just like a, like someone just like got hurt and stuff. But then they realized and then uh, everyone, they were checking the, our lockers. Then uh, girls were crying because they thought they were like unsafe. Police did not find any weapons on campus and school will be back in session tomorrow. A man is dead after a shootout with police in Longview this morning. Police say it started at three when a neighbor called about a man outside acting erratically. When officers got there, they saw that he had a gun before he took off running into a home. He then fired at police who shot back. The suspect died. It was a scary way to wake up for a lot of people living at the mobile home park where it happened. Scary, <laughs> you know, you never know they could have been shot at my trailer or something. You, crazy people. Kids were totally uh, scared. Yeah, they didn't know what was going on, you know, and then they wanted their mom and her mom was at work and a story at the fish hatchery. No bystanders or officers were hurt. We don't know yet if police killed the gunman or if he shot himself. Portland is getting money to fight traffic and climate change, and it's coming from a pretty unexpected source. Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Portland is one of 20 cities to get a two and a half million dollar grant from his Bloomberg Philanthropies. That's the mayor's charity organization. That money will help speed up plans to reduce carbon emissions while encouraging biking, mass transit, and pedestrian friendly projects. People who live in the St. John's neighborhood of North Portland are calling for safer streets. The city says it's set to begin phase two of what's called the St. John's Truck Strategy Project. The $5 million plan will reduce freight traffic and improve safety for pedestrians and bikes on North Fessenden and St. Louis Avenue. Work was supposed to start back in 2017 but got delayed. People who support it rallied at City Hall today. It is long past time for these changes to be made so that people in St. John's can cross this car that runs through the middle of St. John's, by the way. We are eager to get this project started. Uh, we understand the community is also eager to see this project uh, break ground. Phase two of the project is now expected to start next year. Red light cameras in Beaverton are now issuing speeding tickets as well. The city installed speed detecting red light cameras at four intersections to see if there was a need for speeding enforcement and evidently there was because Beaverton police say 94,000 drivers have been caught speeding and up until now they've only been getting warnings but the grace period is over. So depending on how fast you're going, that ticket's going to cost you anywhere from 165 to 440 bucks. You do have to be going at least 11 miles over the speed limit to get a ticket. An alert tonight for you. A Portland company is recalling a lot of food because of a possible salmonella and listeria contamination. Mary's Harvest Fresh Food says a corn ingredient is the problem. It's recalling ready to eat chicken wraps that have this green label on them. And also check if you have this Mexicali chicken salad. It's sold at Trader Joe's. It's also being recalled. There are no reports of people getting sick, but we do have more details on the recall at KGW.com. Heads down, everyone. The Great Oregon Shakeout is set to happen tomorrow morning. It's a big statewide earthquake prepar preparedness drill. People will drop, cover, and hold for 60 seconds as if a major earthquake was happening. It'll happen at exactly 1018 a.m. for October 18th. You can learn more and register at shakeout.org. The event is actually happening worldwide, and millions of people are expected to participate.
A Portland woman is collecting clothes to send to the orphanage in Haiti where she lived when she was a little girl. Lizzie Evans was born in Haiti, but has spent most of her life in Oregon. Haiti is one of the poorest nations in the world with half of its population living in poverty. Evans says she wants to help the place that cared for her as a baby, so she's collecting clothes for everyone from babies to adults to send to the New Life Children's Home. They were just hit with a hurricane three weeks ago, and it seems like, you know, every time they get hit with a natural disaster and it, you know, knocks them down. So hopefully collecting clothes and from babies to adults and send them the first week of December will, you know, bring happiness to the kids and adults in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, especially around Christmas time. So she has sent about 15 boxes full of clothes <laughs> in the past and wants to triple the amount this time. Evan says donated clothes can be used as long as they're in good condition. Remember, the weather down there is tropical, so she's looking for lighter weight clothing, even sandals. If you'd like to help her out, we've posted her contact information on KGW.com. Well, our gorgeous stretch of weather we've had has been great for business at local pumpkin farms, but the weather isn't the only draw. Pumpkin farmers make more than half of their annual income just in October. So they're trying to draw people to the farm with agrotainment. It's no longer just about the pumpkins. Farms are adding more for families to do with the pumpkin patch. Things like corn mazes and hay rides and food. The pumpkin patch is the draw, but when weather doesn't cooperate, farms need a backup plan. Because of mother nature, because of um, just the nature of farming, you can't have your eggs all in one basket. So a lot of farms these days have added fee-based activities to help offset the produce side or the pumpkin side when the weather's not good or maybe the crop doesn't turn out exactly how you had planned. If you haven't picked out your pumpkin, go soon. Maybe on a weekday too, it gets really busy on the weekends. Farmers told us this coming weekend is typically their busiest of the year. Coming up, a place of their own, the success story in Clackamas County that's getting homeless vets back on their feet. Plus, the Goonies may never say die, but the owner of the famous house wishes they'd never visit again. What the city of Astoria is considering to curb excessive visitors and illegal parking near the tourist spot. Well, there's been a great run of weather at the coast and in the valleys. The coast is about to see a change for the valleys, though. More sunshine. We're in the 70s again today. I'll let you know how many more 70 degree days we have coming up.